As the conflict in Ukraine rages on, tensions are mounting and questions are being raised about the leadership of President Vladimir Putin. In this video, we'll be discussing the recent shift in Germany's policy towards Ukraine, including their decision to supply Ukraine with military aid, such as anti-tank weapons and surface-to-air missiles. We'll also talk about other countries that have pledged military aid to Ukraine. In a significant change in policy, Germany has agreed to supply Ukraine with 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger surface-to-air missiles from its military stocks. This shift in policy comes as Russia continues its invasion of Ukraine and fighting intensifies around the Ukrainian capital. The decision has been welcomed by the Ukrainian president, who has been urging Germany to provide military assistance to help defend against the Russian army. In addition to Germany's pledge, the Netherlands has committed to sending 50 Panzerfaust III anti-tank weapons and 400 rockets to Ukraine. The U.S. has promised to send $350 million worth of military equipment to Ukraine as well. Germany's previous refusal to approve weapon deliveries and its earlier decision to only send 5,000 helmets had caused frustration and anger in Ukraine, with some officials mocking the aid as a joke. Pressure has also been mounting on Germany to support harsher sanctions against Russia, with them now joining other Western powers in kicking Russia out of the swift international payment system. On top of this, Germany halted the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, designed to transport Russian natural gas to Germany, citing Russia's actions towards Ukraine. The US has also imposed sanctions on the company in charge of building the pipeline project. Since the Russian invasion in February 2022, Ukraine has received military aid worth billions of dollars from at least 28 countries. The aid includes conventional weapons, as well as more advanced equipment and weaponry, such as artillery, anti-aircraft weapons, anti-tank weapons, armored vehicles, reconnaissance and attack drones, helicopters, small arms, ammunition, and body armor. The United States and United Kingdom both NATO members have been supplying Ukraine with sophisticated weapons like multiple rocket launch systems, MAMPAD systems, NLAWs, Harpoon anti-ship missiles, Stinger missiles, Javelin anti-tank missiles, Nylan anti-tank guided missiles, Cheetah anti-aircraft missiles, and Mastiff armored vehicles, among others. Poland has pledged T-72 tanks, while Australia has pledged M-113 armored personnel carriers and Bushmaster protected mobility vehicles. Turkey has pledges Bayraktar TB-2 combat drones, which Ukrainian forces use to destroy Russian artillery systems and armored vehicles. The U.S. has committed at least $54 billion in aid for Ukraine, including more than $20 billion in military support. In June 2022, the Department of Defense authorized the 11th drawdown of equipment from Dodi inventories for Ukraine. Despite the growing arsenal, Ukraine, with an active military personnel of just 200,000, is still significantly outgunned by Russian forces. To address this, Ukraine has been seeking a significant increase in arms to fight off Russian forces. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said allies would continue to deliver heavy weapons and long-range systems to Ukraine. Defense ministers from NATO countries and other parts of the world are expected to discuss even more weapon deliveries to Ukraine in the coming days. China has proposed a peace plan to resolve would not have been possible without the determination and resilience of the Ukrainian people, who, with Western support and weapons, have put up an incredible fight against the Russian invaders. Vladimir Putin was surprised by the Ukrainians' resilience, and also by the solidarity shown by Western nations and U.S. allies in NATO. Putin had assumed that there would be no support for Ukraine, especially after the ignominious retreat of the Americans from Kabul in August 2021. However, Putin was proven wrong, and Russian forces have been advancing and retreating in a push-pull manner. Russia continues to hold territory in the southeastern part of Ukraine, specifically in the Donetsk region of Luhansk. This is the sticking point in any potential peace agreement because Russia will only agree to peace if Ukraine accepts the territorial gains made by Russia. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has ruled this out and even said that they are prepared to kick the Russians out of Crimea.
Even if Putin were to achieve his goal of holding on to the southeastern portion, it would still be a gain for Russia that dates back to 2014, when they invaded southeastern Ukraine and supported separatists there. Negotiating a ceasefire and peace agreement will be challenging and interesting to see what happens. It's true that once you have Crimea, you would want a land bridge to connect it. As for the Chinese plan, it is important to take it seriously. Just a few days ago, there were talks of China supplying weapons to support Russia, so it's difficult to determine how neutral China is in this situation. However, it seems that the Chinese are prepared to support the Russians if it means the Ukrainians to the negotiating table. Like the West, China has its preferred outcome for this conflict. What's noteworthy is that the Chinese are proposing the terms of peace, not the West. So it's interesting that the initiative now lies with China rather than the West when it comes to moving forward or not moving forward towards peace talks. According to Ukraine's top military intelligence official, Kirill Budanov, Russia will eventually run out military tools by the end of spring. This prediction comes amid uncertainty about the next phase of the war will look like as it moves into its second year. Ukrainian officials had previously signaled that Russia was planning a major new offensive to coincide with the one-year anniversary of its invasion of Ukraine on February 24, but such an offensive has yet to materialize. In a heavily guarded, fortified office in Kyiv, Budanov explained that Russia has wasted huge amounts of human resources, armaments and materials in its attempts to achieve its war aims in Ukraine, and that its economy and production are not able to cover these losses. He further predicted that Ukraine and Russia would fight a decisive battle this spring. And this battle will be the final one before this war ends. However, he did not provide any specific evidence to back up his claims. Budanov's forecast aligns with the consensus among independent military analysts that Russia currently lacks ammunition, military supplies, and skilled soldiers needed to make significant headway against Ukrainian defensive lines in the east. Russia's lost about half of its tanks, its artillery fire is down, it doesn't have a productive base to make a lot of new equipment, said Phillips O'Brien, a professor of strategic security studies. The Pentagon assessed in late December that Russia's military would likely run out of its newer stock of ammunition by early 2023, forcing it to rely on stocks produced during Cold War, which are less reliable and potentially degraded. Russia's military is weaker than it was a year ago, with fewer frontline equipment and less well-trained troops. As reports are implying that Russia are running out of military tools, could this be the chance for Ukraine to regain control over Crimea? Budinov also states that the war with Russia would not end until Ukraine's Crimea region was liberated. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has also made the return of Crimea and other territories occupied by Russia a condition of any peace settlement. However, losing Crimea to Ukraine would probably cross a red line for Russia and would likely risk escalation of the war. As we discussed in the video, we do finally see that some NATO countries have been adjusting their policies to help Ukraine with much-needed military equipment to strengthen their odds towards winning this war against Russia, as well as the other countries who have contributing a lot earlier, stating that they will continue their support in the future. Now we want to hear from you. What do you think of NATO approving more contributions towards Ukraine, with the risks of escalating the war even further outside of Ukraine? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, make sure to leave a subscribe, so you don't miss any interesting content regarding the war in Ukraine. See you in the next one.